I'm near the airport. Why am I not behind this uh, guy from Pennsylvania? And all his load is pretty much the same as mine, except he has a cooling tower and then he has some, uh, some what looks like uh, ladders. You know, they install on the side of the building, but the same stuff. Uh, but mine, that huge box, right? So all of the, the big box stays here. And so I gotta keep all my flags and signs because the, the rear piece, that circular thing like a cover for a fan stays on and I'm heading to uh, Northern Ontario for uh, delivery tomorrow so that's another uh, 400 miles and then the boss says they found me a load from there going to Michigan so hopefully I'll be home uh, for the weekend but for now Captain Sergey is uh, hot at work. I uh, got up at uh, 5.30 today and started driving uh, half an hour before sunrise which was at 6.45. It's already getting later and later every day and I was driving and it's already feel, feels chilly in the morning and then I drive and I always hate the look of these, um, you know, migration birds flying north so that's a sure sign that <laughs> bad times are coming you know so winter is coming and I saw a bunch of geese heading north
that's it. So now I just have. What is that noise? Somebody drilling something. So now I just have one piece and uh, it's 500 pounds. <laughs> I'm gonna get great fuel mileage. Okay, I found the address. So I'm near the airport in Mississauga, right? So it's 687 kilometers. So it's pretty far. So it's like seven hours, about 400 miles. And I'm supposed to be there uh, tomorrow morning. Time now is uh, nine o'clock. So I know, so I'll be driving all day, probably be there, find a truck stop somewhere there around seven o'clock at night. I'm guessing but now I'm very light but it's really tricky you know with this piece you saw me backing it was not easy because everything is in the back you know normally if you have an oversized load it's in uh, you know it's somewhere here but I didn't want to bother them with uh, moving this thing to the deck you know because then you have to I have to use blocks it might start shifting like over there it's sitting I don't want to touch it you know like like I, I always say, лучше враг хорошего, right? The best is the enemy of the good. Like I mentioned in the previous video, if it, if it works over there, don't move it. I just added another flag on the very side uh, where it's the widest, right? And I still have flags in the back, I have flags in the front, I'm still uh, oversized load because that thing is about, uh, it's a bit less than this piece they just took off, but it's uh, about 11 feet 11 feet wide so it's a bit it's a lot easier because now i can um you know the visibility is much better because i can see above it right really cool okay so the thing is the most difficult part of this journey <laughs> is to uh, is to get out of this street lights and we need to get 401 right and now because I'm so light I'm traveling with uh, only five axles on the ground. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go on 401. Let's try to send me on some crazy, you know, shortcuts. I don't care if there's traffic. I just, I, I really, in a big truck, especially with the oversized load, I don't like this, you know. I, I mean, like you see how the blue line is like this, right? Like that's okay for a car. But in a big truck, I always try to stick to one road, maybe two, you know. The less, the fewer turns I make, the less chance. The less chance is that will I kill an innocent uh, freight broker. And as one uh, guy said in the Independence Day movie, nobody's perfect. Some days my aim is not that good. Now why are we moving? It's all, all red. That guy is flying over there, Dan Ross. Okay. Yeah, and I see that my piece is pretty much just a bit wider than these uh, white lines over here but if I drive on a regular uh, on, on a freeway so this piece will be pretty much even it's not gonna stick out into another lane see like this I know it's very annoying you know even when I watch my my own movies like this signal is so loud you know and again Mac right um, in cars actually I didn't try it in the Ford but I know I had it in the Mazda in the Mazda you can 
select the level of the you know audio level of your turn signals on the Mazda I had um, like just two quiet and loud and I think I used loud because it was it was not that loud but this thing see it's I think it's made for the purpose of you know if you fall asleep you know behind the wheel and then somehow your your left hand slides like this and it activates the signal so oh shoot I hope nobody saw me right dozing off <laughs> everything is in this Mac is loud you know uh, I bet the chief engineer is probably um, I'm I, just a wild guess I think he's uh, his or she is hard of hearing because the old speakers are like 20 uh, decibels no 200 decibels higher than they should be so don't get me started so no I'm not buying another Mac I know there's one coming in September and uh, all they did is just they changed the you know like all these yeah brand new model yeah right like maybe what they did I was thinking actually I had an I have an idea about this my idea is that they took a truck from another market like if you go to uh, mactrucks.au Australia I think it's like mactrucks.com look at this this signal is so short yeah and there's a flying J over there I wanted to get to go there grab coffee and then I I, I thought it's so small and now I have to keep it sorry I have to keep the signal on because I'm an, I'm the first right I have to let people see what I'm doing uh, but so yeah my, my theory is that they're just gonna take no voice for you uh, so I think they're just gonna take a truck from the uh, let's say Australian market because if you go to that Mac trucks uh, Australia you will see that they have some really really cool trucks you know that one I would buy they still have uh, what looks like a Mac Titan and their names are different and they have uh, a couple of other models that seem kind of like I don't know like a like a marriage between basically it looks like I don't know like a Western star or something kind of like semi classic truck I love them you know and that's my guess because that those trucks over there right all the technology is there the conveyors working people know what the heck they're doing so all they have to do is just bring a couple of Aussies over to Pennsylvania and just make make uh, everybody at the Pennsylvania uh, plant use the word mate every sentence like I think it's one word per sentence you gotta say mate uh, at least once in each sentence you know like when you greet each other hey morning mate how are you doing mate uh, having coffee mate yeah mate so as long as, as soon as you you do that the uh, the Australians should understand you because otherwise they are lost without the word mate in the sentence they don't know what the heck you're talking about and that's basically that's the only difference you need to know about the Australian English and American English so it's pretty simple so I'm, I'm thinking I'm saying that it's gonna be pretty simple for the Mac trucks to bring a couple of uh, guys from Oz and just teach them how to build these trucks and actually that would be that would be cool because I really like the the look of those trucks you know but in Australia like all their ratings are different you get the uh, engine with a uh, much higher torque and uh, more horsepower just that they you know the emission levels uh, their rules are different than here and so they allow much more horsepower in trucks why do we have the fan on do I have my air conditioning on uh, I don't think so huh 
it's only 21 degree outside Celsius about 70 71 and a half Fahrenheit so I'm, I'm just gonna keep rambling till we uh, hit the freeway if you're tired just turn off the video and go go to back to sleep but I thought I'd do some some smart commentaries here so this area this is a Dixie Road right oh yeah I see it found it it says an eight, 800 meters uh, turn right to 401 East now I see that airplane Wait, it reminds me of that uh, of the drone safe policies you know where they say don't fly over buildings groups of people uh, and vehicles that's the first thing you learn when you buy a drone and I was always like like what's what's with the airplanes like they have airports like here uh, Pearson International Airport is right here no over here so that plane was taking off so there's an airport over here so there's planes constantly landing and taking off and they're going just above the freeway you know how is that safe and of course nobody on the plane has a parachute right that's another thing that puzzles me uh, forever because I guess my my father was a military pilot and all military planes of course you know have parachutes right like if this was me I would just sell uh, more expensive tickets you know I think airlines they, they're losing a big opportunity over here so what you should do is let's say you charge uh, I don't know $500 for a ticket so then you have you should have you know how you know the prices are different between economy class and then you know first class right they should have they should have a separate class probably call it 100% survival class where they give you a parachute and you know I would pay I don't know 100 bucks more 200 bucks more and then instead of doing this you know where they show you the exits and stuff like that you will have these cute cute attendants demonstrate how to use the parachute all right so now we are on 401 what is going on over here East the sign says very slow to Kipling and yeah what else is new 917 in the morning of course it's slow you should just you know they should just save the electricity and put the sign there not electronic but you know permanent like with a permanent marker <laughs> because it's over here it's always slow all right we'll keep rambling till we hit uh, this is the collectors right I'll keep rambling till we hit the 401 Express, which is uh, next half a mile. Yeah, that's a weird piece over there I have in the back, right? So right now, when I keep my bulldog... No, that's my favorite feature of this truck, right? The bulldog on the hood. I, I'm serious, it helped me so many times, you know? Like, for example, now I know that I gotta keep it a couple of inches to the left from the white line. If I do that, I'm smack in the middle. Because, you know, it's really, look, there's vehicles all around me, right? And sometimes they don't realize that I'm oversized. But I got flags and signs and stuff like that. And so, yeah, so this bulldog, this mascot thing, it's really great. 
I wish what you know another thing is what they could have done instead like on a serious note they maybe put <laughs> put like a ruler over there you know like put something horizontal you know like give me instead of a dog give me like a piece of metal you know then like seriously that would be so cool and just make marks on it uh oh that's not good see that berry over there very very close I cannot go over there no I gotta ask these guys over here to let me in anyway so we're gonna stop here yeah of course this guy he has no clue he just says he just thinks that I'm being difficult but anyway so we're gonna a nice guy you probably saw my oversized load because yeah seriously like that's that's too close you know for me for my comfort like over there where the grass is I see that it's like the the orange line is like this so this far away from the concrete barrier because I see and, and it's orange because of the it's orange because of its construction so these are temporary lines anyway so we almost made it to 401 so I'm not sure if I'll be able to show unloading tomorrow because it's a, it's a big steel plant. Yeah, like right now, the edges of that skid that that big piece sits on, oh, on this side it even sticks out because I'm afraid of this side. But anyway, just another challenge, you know, with an oversized load going through these uh, construction areas. Yeah, you see, that was the point. No, further down over there. Now look at this guy. Where are you going? The sign said the traffic is slow, right? And you can see how... I can see how the concrete is, is scratched over there. You know? That was the point I was talking about with a piece of steel over there. And the scratch right there. And uh, like I always say, if you see scratches or damage to the pavement or the sides, that's where you gotta be very, very careful. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. So just another load, another challenge for Captain Sergey here. But I think I got it. Please keep watching, subscribe, and sit tight for more.